Welcome to Special Stage and welcome to round one of the 2013 REIS Get Connected BTRDA Rally Championship. If you were watching last year, you will know that the title went down to the wire. The very last round, the Cambrian decided our BTRDA Rally Champions. This year, the fans, the spectators, and of course the teams will all be hoping for such drama and excitement once again. But there'll be a number of other drivers all hoping they are number one. Round one of the championship starts right here in Colford before a short drive out to the classic Forest of Dean stages. Sallow Vallets, Serridge, Trellick and Chepstow Park make up almost 20 stage miles with another 25 facing the crew to make it past the day's service back at Chepstow Racecourse. Missing out on that title on the final round last season was a disappointment for Hugh Hunter and Andy Marchbank, but they wouldn't be letting that stand in the way of a good push to start off 2013. They start the day as they mean to go on, with the lead of the event after the first two stages. But it was close, with less than 10 seconds between the entire top 10. square left, wet inside. Crest, to K left in. To pass right in. And six left, half on, well in. A season of ups and downs for David Wright. Michael Wilkinson had meant they could just attack this season with a clean sheet. Second place for now was a great start, just five seconds behind the rally leaders. We saw a promising pace from Ewan Thorburn and Paul Beaton on selected rounds in 2012, tempting the Scottish driver out for the opening round this season and showing his intent from the start, fastest by three seconds on the opening stage and briefly taking the lead. Settling on third on the following stage, eight seconds behind the rally leader now. A new face for this season would be previous Northern Irish champion Conor McCloskey and Francis Regan at the wheel of an Impressor WRC for their attack on the BTRDA Rally Series. They were certainly capable of good results, we've seen that in Ireland. And fourth overall was a good start here despite paddle shift problems in stage two. With a busy season ahead, it would be last minute prep for Matt Edwards and Will Rogers, but they make it to the start and set them to fifth overall. Still not 100% happy with the car, but it wasn't a bad start for the pair who lead the B13 class at this stage. A fantastic battle in Group N last season would be about to unfold again this season, as Patrick Naylor and Ian Lawrence set out to command the lead of N4 at this early stage of the opening round, but a lead of only three seconds in that class. After having so much fun on the final round of 2012 and deciding not to take a year off after all, Tom Norton and Horace Saville returned to form with second in Group N at this early stage. But it wasn't without its moments, the slippery conditions catching everyone out this weekend, but unfortunately for Norton, it was in front of one of our cameras. A fantastic victory on his home event at the end of last season would mean Luke Francis and John Roberts had set the expectations high. Third in Group N at the moment and eighth overall was a good start, but a spin on the first stage wasn't helping them climb the leaderboard just at the moment. For Rob Smith and Ross Weir, it would be a four-wheel drive start to the season, bringing out the Impreza instead of the more familiar Chevette. And it was going well so far as they lie in ninth, just two seconds down on Francis ahead of them something which could have been very different if it hadn't have been for a spin midway through the second stage. Six left, Max don't cut. 40. Six right, Max don't cut. 170. Hoping for a bit better look this season, it will be 10th at this stage in the rally for Jamie Anderson and Ella Flynn. With mixed results 
in 2012, some good finishes and some they'd like to forget. This steady start would be expected from the pair. Unfortunately, we see the early exit of Nigel Griffiths and Robin Kellard as they fall foul of the slippery conditions and park the car in the scenery. A disappointing start to the season for the Subaru pair. Some familiar faces would be missing from the Silver Star category on this opening round, but equally we'd have some new faces to play with. But out in front after stage two, it'll be occasional Silver Star pairing Will Onions and Dave Williams. They lead the way with just a one second lead. A new face at the top of the Silver Star would be second place Mark Griffiths with Thomas Marrett alongside. They lead the B11 class despite feeling a little rusty, having not been in the car now for a while. Third will be occupied by Ben Llewellyn and Tim Samuel. They lie second in B11 as well, just eight seconds down on Griffiths. A good start to the first round for this escort pair. And yet another new face in the Silver Star would be fourth place Robert Barrett. But he calls on the experience of regular 1400 navigator Pamela Hilton this season. And the pair get off to a good start as well in that distinctive orange escort. First of the historic crew so far would be the regular faces of Theo Bengri and Les Forsbrook. Still campaigning that escort they used in 2012 and going well so far as well for the pair in fifth place. Sixth place Callum Black and James Morgan would be the first of the front wheel drive crews in the Silver Star results. The pair weren't expecting the conditions to be just this slippery and it was catching them out on a couple of occasions. Seventh at this stage would be in the hands of Dave Brick and Rob Woodhouse. The snow-covered widening last season gifted Brick an advantage, but this year it wouldn't be as easy to take that Silver Star victory. Pete Smith and Patrick Walsh meanwhile were back out again this season to contest the Silver Star category and of course the Historic Cup in that Mark I Escort. Going well so far, lying second in the Historics and eighth overall in the Silver Star results. A steady start for Tony Williams and Karen Phelps sees them end stage two in ninth place, just 10 seconds behind Smith ahead of them. And rounding out the Silver Star top 10 would be the BMW of John O'Gorman and John Rutter. Intercom problems on the day's opening stages were not helping the stage times, but that wasn't stopping them setting top 10 leaderboard times. Unfortunately, we lose Roger Taylor and Chris Williams in stage two. They suffer various problems, mechanical, and the occasional mishap out on the stages. Just taking a look now at some of the class runners outside the top of the leaderboards. And second in the B13 class would be Grant Rees and Win Davies. Switching from the micro he used last season to an impressor for this season. Simon Rogers and Andrew Sankey take up third in the B13 class in their Evo. And no problems for Sean Edwards and Gavin Haycock as they cope with the conditions to lead that B10 class. And it will be a fine second place spot at this stage in the event in B10 for Robert Smith and Jonathan Bucard. Some slippery moments on stage one, a sign of things to come, but it was going well so far. It will be a tricky morning for third in class Thomas Lloyd and Craig Maggs. They get caught out with the slippery conditions, hitting a fence post and causing damage to the car. Meanwhile, the step up to the N3 class was going well so far for Aaron McClure and Tom Woodburn as they lead that class in the Fiesta. It would be an unusually eventful start to the event for David Poyser and John Orme as they take up second in class in the Civic. And with the 1400 car not ready for this opening round, it would be the Fiesta for Cameron Davies and Alistair Dodd. And they lie in third place in N3 as well, not happy with how the car was performing though. In third place of the historic category were John Baker and Cyan John in this escort. So with two stages down, here is a quick reminder of how the results are looking so far here at round one. Back 
to the gold star now and it will be all change at the top as David Wright and Michael Wilkinson make a push on these two stages to take the lead now by just two seconds. Stages down, was that the best one so far? I think so, yeah. Uh, the third one there was a bit slippy, a bit loose, but uh, that was good in there. Enjoy. It has to show that you're finding the rhythm today. Yeah, maybe. Just, uh, I haven't been out since September, so just getting back into it really slowly. Keep going, hopefully we'll have a good day. No problems through these two for Hugh Hunter and Andy Marchbank. They set the second fastest time on stage four and end the leg just behind right. Just trying to keep neat and tidy and stay out of all the muck and uh, try and keep the car as straight as I can. But it, it, it's really quite mucky and slippy. But uh, yeah, we're, we're going okay. Touch wood, you know, nothing, nothing's nothing untoward. Just trying to keep a sensible head on and uh, start of a new campaign. Obviously, last well, year is another yeah, story. I mean, yeah, we obviously had a really disappointing end to the year last year. So third place at this stage, still occupied by Ewan Thorburn and Paul Beaton. The gap now down to just two seconds from Hunter, meaning just four seconds separate the top three at this stage. Ewan, we have you almost equal there to Hugh coming through that stage four. Yeah, it's probably one of the better ones after this morning. Slippery uh, out there, yeah? Yeah, you can get some grip and then all of a sudden you, it just goes to no grip, so it's quite hard to judge, but... No, we can have a bit more of a push this afternoon, obviously Ben and Sarah have not been for a rally for a long time, so... Sitting just outside the podium places, just 10 seconds further back, would be Conor McCloskey and Francis Reagan. A bit of damage to the front of the car was a sure sign they were pushing hard against the competition this weekend. Coming fast into there, how's it going? Uh, it's been tricky, um, very, very, very slippy. Uh, tires are working well. Um, just going to change a wee bit in the car. Yeah, you're getting them hot. Huh? You're getting them hot. Uh, it's, it's getting very, very hot. Um, other than that, things are going good. There will be no change in the leading B13 place though, with Matt Edwards and Will Rogers still sitting in that fifth place and leading that class. And right max in over crest continues to 130 down. To square left minus, repeat square left minus and square right to go three right to left and right max 80 left tightens to one long watch this run tightens to one long 60 left max line and to right C400 over finish that's the baby. Well done, mate. Yeah, the main thing is we got here, which is wasn't looking very likely a couple of a few hours ago, really. Problems with mapping and things like that, but just to be here is a, a bonus. Now you're here, how's it going? Uh, not so bad, really. The anti-lag isn't working and we've got a bit of toe out on the front, but what can you do, eh? If you're preparing it all last minute. Well, you, keep you your toe in, then. Yeah, yeah, keep your toe in, yeah. Unfortunately for Patrick Naylor and Ian Lawrence, they drop out of the event in stage four with a broken steering arm. So this means that, along with some good times, it will be a move up to the Group N lead for Luke Francis and John Roberts, now in sixth place overall. Yeah, it's gone really well to be fair, we had a bit of a um, spin on the first stage, but apart from that we're putting some good times in and the conditions are the same for everyone, so we're having a good go at it. 
Some good times for Rob Smith and Ross Weir. See them move up a couple of places in the right direction to line seventh place going into service. Very, very slippy today. I'm sure everybody's saying the same, are they? Yeah. Incredibly slippy. I thought we were off already three times today, but... Yeah, a few people have said that. I think it's a case of getting to the end, isn't it, today? Yeah, I've got to keep it neat and tidy, really. So I'm shouting at myself to tidy things up. But uh, no, it's good. So far, so good. And it's a disappointing start for last year's event winners, Charlie Payne and Craig Thorley, as they only just move into the top ten through these stages. Lying in eighth place now, a couple of stalls in the first few stages were not helping their overall times. Yeah, we're having a very good run. We stalled on the first two stages, once on each, and had a bit of an off, so we've dropped a lot of time. Apart from that, car OK? Apart from that, we're still going, so yeah, we'll keep plodding along. On joint times with Payne in eighth place with Jamie Anderson and Ella Flynn. They start to pick up the pace a little, and with retirements ahead, they now lie second in the Group N battle. It's a bit of a hairy start to the first state of first rally back, but um, yeah, we're coping, and hopefully we'll get a finish, and that's all we're aiming for today, really. It's the start of a very long season, I reckon. Um, yeah, a long season. It's going to be hard, but this rally we never really get on with. We never did it last year, so... You know, we'll see how we get on and hopefully from there we can progress. And rounding out a pretty close four top ten would be Grant Rees and Wynn Davies. No time to talk to our cameras at the end of stage four though as a big off in the stage had caused some damage to the back of that Impreza. Onto the Silver Star and it will still be Will Onions and Dave Williams out in the lead of this category with a nice healthy margin now of 25 seconds. Theo Bengri and Les Forsberg were also having a good run. With early problems on the car putting them down the order a little, they were now fighting their way back up well and truly. Second Silver Star and first of the historic cup runners. Nice and slippery out there for you. Yeah, it's very slippy. It's very bumpy as well. It's deceiving. There'll be a few moments in there. Yeah, there have been. Yeah. Not for you, though? No, it's OK. We had, a, we had a plug lead come off again on the first stage after one mile. We did four miles on the plug lead off, but we're getting back into it now. You're nailing your colours to the mast on this one. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Just hoping to get through it. For Mark Griffiths and Thomas Marrett, it would still be the B11 class lead. The lack of time in the car not showing at all as the pair remain close to the front in third place. Four stages down, Mark. How's it going? Yeah, not too bad because I haven't been in the car for about eight months. So, yeah. so lots of fun then? Yeah, lots of fun. It's the right car to have when it's muddy, isn't it? Something with rear wheel drive. It can catch out in a few places, but it's good. No change though for Robert Barrett and Pamela Hilton. They managed to keep the car on the stages and in fourth place. It wasn't without its moments though, the pair get to the end of stage four with just one second between themselves and third. Rob, we don't have a prize for the most sideways through the flying finish, well, but you might be winning it if we did. Haven't you? If you weren't entertaining, there wouldn't be any point being here, would there? So. Yeah, you're having a lot of fun there by the look of it. Absolutely, it's all sixes and sixes, then five and six. Absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant. We've got a bit of smoke coming out of somewhere yeah, now. I can see though, that. So. For Dave Brick and Rob Woodhouse, it would be a climb up to fifth place now. This despite a spin and a stall in stage four, losing them some time. Yeah, I spun it in there and stalled it, so it's a bit disappointing really, but it's all good fun and I'm enjoying it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you look to be. Yeah. We'll let you go back to service and catch you later. Okay, cheers, thank you very much. No such problems for Callum Black and James Morgan though, as they remain in that sixth place they established on the opening pair of stages. Four stages down, how's it going Callum? Yeah, it's very slippy out there. Good fun though. Um, it's good to be back in the car again, I guess. A bit more mileage. Um, but yeah, didn't expect to be that slippy. So. You co-driver for this event? Yeah, I'm fortunately got James on board for the rest of the season, providing uh, he still doesn't hate me by the end of the rally. So yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to it. A bit of bad news now for Ben Llewellyn and Tim Samuel as they slip down the order and into seventh place now, having a tough run on this opening widening rally. Pete Smith and Patrick Walsh are another crew to hold position and remain in their eighth place. Second in the historic still at this stage. Tony Williams and Karen Phelps have no change in ninth, although still struggling a bit with the conditions. 
and with the intercom issues now sorted, it will be an easier run for John O'Gorman and John Rutter as they continue to round out the top 10. So with four stages now complete, this is how the results are shaping up. Three more stages made up the afternoon loop, Male Scott, Serridge 2 and Speech House. But despite only three stages, it would still make up over half of the stage mileage, with the long Speech House stage the sting in the tail for the crews who make it this far. Back to the overall results now and the lead of the event had once again changed. Perhaps a picture of things to come this season. It was back with the early leaders Hugh Hunter and Andy Marchbank. As had been the case all day, the lead was only small. Three seconds separating the current rally leaders with stage one rally leaders Ewan Thorburn and Paul Beaton as they move up into that second place on this loop. Rally leaders after stage four, David Wright and Michael Wilkinson would be back down to third at this point, but it was only four seconds separating the top three with just one stage remaining in this exciting opening round. Having battled just outside the podium places all day, it was still fourth for Conor McCloskey and Francis Reagan, but the gap had closed a little. Just six seconds behind Wright and only 11 seconds off the rally leaders into the final stage. For Matt Edwards and Will Rogers, it would be more of the same. Still in that fifth place and unable to make any more advance of the results, although the gap to McCloskey was only 10 seconds. Fast right, five right opens room. 130, left max to brow, 100, left max line and left long max long and right max in long to crest, repeat right max in long to crest, 60, 5 right extra long, tightens to fast, 3 in late, 60 crest, fast 2 right in, 2 right in, early left max continues over brow, and right tightens to flat four, opens and tightens line. Early left max in long, to flat crest. To left max continues over crest okay, 350. To crest long. Care right tightens to three long tightens. Luke Francis and John Roberts maintain their good form too. Lying in sixth place and still remaining in the lead of that group end battle. It's a place gained for Charlie Payne and Craig Thorley, now up into seventh, but it was all a little late in the day for the 2012 rally winners. For Jamie Anderson and Ella Finn, it would still be eighth, but now holding that place on their own and not sharing it with Payne. Eight seconds now behind the Focus WRC. A welcome climb back up the results after their early problems pushes Tom Norton and Horace Saville up into ninth. They lie third in that Group N battle, but that's no consolation of course for that lead of the class that they held earlier in the event. And rounding out the top ten in Gold Star would be Keith Parry and Errol Evans, also lying second in the B13 class. Unfortunately, this loop sees us lose Rob Smith and Ross Weir, 
as they retire in stage five with a broken drive shaft. In the Silver Star category, the only thing to change at the top was the difference. Will Onions and Dave Williams now up to a 38 second lead of the category. For Theo Bengri and Les Forsbrook, it would still be second. Not able to advance on Onions, but they were keeping everyone else at bay, including keeping hold of that historic lead. For Robert Barrett and Pamela Hilton, it would be a step up to the podium places now as they overhaul Griffiths to take that third place. So unfortunately, that means Mark Griffiths and Thomas Marrett would be a drop down into fourth. With it, the loss of the class lead to Barrett now having to settle for second in that class. But that fourth place wouldn't even be theirs alone. They would share that place with Dave Brick and Rob Woodhouse the second place B12 crew on exactly the same times as Griffiths going into the final stage. We'd seen a consistent run for Callum Black and James Morgan as they remain in that sixth place, but with only one second separating them from the joint fourth place, the final stage would be sure to see a push. Stage six sees us lose Ben Llewellyn and Tim Samuel from the results. So that's a place inherited for Pete Smith and Patrick Walsh. Still going well, they step up to seventh, remaining second in the historic cup. Tony Williams and Karen Phelps are another to be gifted a place in this stage, stepping up into eighth place now. While for John O'Gorman and John Rutter in the BMW, it would be more of the same. They remain constant and advance a place with the rest. Consistency paying off here at this opening wide in rally. All this movement up at the top allows Cameron Davies and Alistair Dodd to make an appearance in our top 10 now, leading the way in the N3 class as they do so. So with just the final stage of this exciting opening BTRDA round remaining, this is how the top of the leaderboard is looking. With just the final stage remaining, let's have a look at a few of the class runners not featuring in our overall top 10s. For Robert Smith and Jonathan Bucard, it had been a close battle as they lay second in class, but this final stage would see the pair drop down to third in B10. The battle for that second place though was fought with Thomas Lloyd and Craig Maggs in the Peugeot 205 and the pair are more than happy to take that runner-up place in the final stage of the event. In the N3 class it will be Scott Armstrong and Matt Beebe that take the final step of the podium. Matt no stranger to the stages but not often on the co-driver's side of the car. For Dan Wakefield and Keegan Rees it will be second in class. A few issues throughout the day would seem less of a problem compared to not having a lamp pod for the final darkening stage. A slow run to the finish ensured no problems though and a good class finish. And third of the historic crews this weekend would be Rex Island and Adrian Scaddy. This would be down to the last minute drop down the order for fellow escort crew John Baker and Cyan John. They lose a lot of time on that final stage to drop down from the third place they held for the last few stages. So onto the category results now and we lose Cameron Davies and Alistair Dodd in the final stage. They put the car off the road. And they wouldn't be the only ones either. After a good run up to ninth overall, it would be an accident that forces the retirement of John O'Gorman and John Rutter in the BMW. The crew get out okay, but the same couldn't be said for the car, putting a likely end to the pair's season at such an early stage. On to the top 10 finishers now, and in 10th then we would see the Civic of David Poyser and John Orme. Their move up to 10th sees them also take home the N3 class trophy. It would be a tense final stage for Sean Edwards and Gavin Haycock on their way to the class B10 win in 9th place. The intercom failing a few miles in and the pair forced to try and shout the directions. 
but maybe it was the more cautious approach that saved them from crashing out like many others before them. For Rob Dennis and Andy Boswell, it will be a great climb up the results in this final stage as they step up to eighth now. Retirements and a quick time all contributing to the five place jump up into the top 10. Just one place gained for Tony Williams and Karen Phelps as they finish in seventh and third in the B11 class. And the red mist had clearly descended on Callum Black over this final stage. He and James Morgan knowing they could climb up into fifth or even fourth, they pushed on through the stage but unfortunately the conditions bit back. The pair leave the road and end their rally in the scenery. After tying times in the penultimate stage, it will be sixth place that Dave Brick and Rob Woodhouse would finally settle on. Not the Silver Star win they had last year, but still a good showing in this slippery opening round. Some last minute movement for Pete Smith and Patrick Walsh would secure them fifth place and with it the second place trophy in the historic cup. And after losing out on that third place earlier in the day, it will be fourth that Mark Griffiths and Thomas Marrett would have to settle on. The times were still good though, with just a minute separating the top four crews. But right in the thick of the action in third place would be Robert Barrett and Pamela Hilton. The pair will miss the next round, but they will certainly be ones to watch from round three onwards. So no change at the top then as we see our historic cup winners Theo Bengri and Les Forsbrook take second overall in the Silver Star results. Theo, do you feel like you're getting more used to the car now? Yeah, well, it's good now. It's about the sixth event and it's getting better all the time. Yeah. The last stage, we had more moments on the last one we've had all day. I don't know why. I don't know whether it's because of the last one, but we were up the ditch, down the ditch, and gets lucky to get to the end. The main thing is, you stayed out of the ditch. Yeah, and there's no damage, but we had a few close ones on the last one. Yeah. And just as they had done all day, Will Onions and Dave Williams going to the final time control as Silver Star victors, extending their lead on this final stage to over a minute now. In the Gold Star, it will be a 10th place finish for Peter Bayliss and Anthony Blythe as they tie up third in the B13 class to boot. This final stage sees us lose Tom Norton and Horace Savile from ninth as they break a wheel in the stage and attempt to limp the car to the finish, but with no luck. This means then a step up to ninth for Keith Wilde and Phil Clark as they take over third in the N4 class too. It will be an eighth place finish for Simon Rogers and Andrew Sankey in the Evo as they take the second place in B13. Unfortunately for Jamie Anderson and Ella Flynn, they will pick up a puncture sliding wide in the final stage, meaning any advance on those in front will be out of the question. They settle them for seventh place and second in the Group N battle. So for Luke Francis and John Roberts, it wouldn't be the overall win they had on the final round last season, but the Group N win and sixth overall was a good start to 2013. But there will be final stage worries as the pair collect a log and cause some very worrying smoke to pour from the car. Luke. You did end 2012, as we've already said today, with a win, and today is a good, another good result to start 2013 with. Yeah, hopefully when we confirm the results. So I think we've won Group A up so far, but um, I'm still waiting on the results. We were lucky to be here after the last stage, mm -hmm. so we've limped back, and hopefully we'll get the result that we think we've got. What was the problem exactly? I've seen you playing with the car since you got back. Oh, we um, came over a crest, and there was a massive rock right in our path, and we couldn't do anything about it, and we hit it, and it squared the wheel off. So as we were going, it was catching the caliper. So then that was three miles in. And then we caught Tom Norton. And then just 
on the yellow board of the flying finish, we lo the front wheel locked up and we shot off into the trees and um, the branch went straight through the radiator. So we've managed to do 15 miles, topping up with water and limb back here. Last year's Wydean winners Charlie Payne and Craig Thorley would have to settle for fifth place this weekend. Off the pace in the conditions and that was all it took to drop them out of the running for the win in the early stages. Charlie, it was a very different story last year when you won this event. It's been a tough day for you, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been a very tough day. We've just not got on with the conditions. Um, I've really just not gone with it. I've just been off the pace. Uh, we had problems on the first two stages, but that aside, we've just we've just been off the pace. So um, we'll uh, we'll do a little bit of practice and uh, see what we can do on the Malcolm Wilson. For Matt Edwards and Will Rogers, it would be the B13 class win that they had held all day. But in the final stage, it would be promotion up to fourth overall for the pair. A welcome result here at round one. Matt, fantastic result at the end of what everyone has been saying has been a really difficult event despite no snow. Yeah, that's it. The snow's probably a bit more predictable at times, but um, no, it's been a really good day for us. Um, everybody's pulled together to get the car here and you know, in, in difficult circumstances. So that's been really good. The car we've had has worked perfectly all day. We, there's a few bits we can go down and, uh, and sort out to improve it and get more out of it. But for a start of the season, obviously a few more points better off than we were last year and we finished second, so that's a good start, that's all I wanted. The reason for Edward's promotion up the results was down to the loss of Ewan Thorburn in the final stage. They head into it with just seconds separating them from the rally leaders, but mechanical troubles put them out of the event and out of round one points. It wouldn't though just be Thorburn contributing to the drama at the top, as rally leaders Hugh Hunter and Andy Marchbank encounter problems on the final stage themselves, dropping down to third overall. The dashboard on the Focus WRC flashing up a warning to Hunter that would later turn out to be gearbox problems. 70, flat right, and slow crest 30, tight K left. And easy left plus in. To pass right in and pass left nips at logs. So that left the two drivers ahead of Hunter now to fight it out for the win. And coming out runner up in that battle would be David Wright and Michael Wilkinson. The pair had led the rally at one point in the day, but they couldn't hold off the final stage charge that pushed them down into second place by just seven seconds. So it was that final stage charge from former Northern Irish champion Conor McCloskey and Francis Reagan that mixed up the results in that final stage. Going into this stage 11 seconds down from the lead in fourth place and coming out seven seconds ahead of everyone else at the end of the 13 and a half miles was a bit of an achievement. The new face on the BTRDA scene had definitely put the cat amongst the pigeons this weekend. So at the end of a surprisingly difficult event for most crews, here's a reminder of how the leaderboard looks. Connor, what a difficult day and what a fantastic result to come away with from the first round of the BTRDA winner. Well done. Thank you very much. Um, I, just, I can't can't believe it. Literally found out two seconds ago that we won the rally. Um, we made a few changes at the last proper service in Chepstow. Um, and the tyres were working well all day, but we had, we had a wee bit of an issue with the back of the car. And what we, we basically said all day was that we wanted to push through the last stage. And uh, we had a good push, we had a good run through it. Um, and I'm really, really happy. You had to, because you were 11 seconds back in fourth going into that final stage. The other three were five seconds separating them in that last stage. Thorburn didn't enter the stage or didn't finish it because of yeah. fuel pressure problems or something. And the other two you fought tooth and nail with all the way through that last stage. Uh, to be fair, um, the, 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 stage, the stage was very good. We, we, we worked hard on it and basically what we done was as the day progressed, it's been 2011 since I've been actually on gravel before, and since as the day progressed what we done was we were building up to it. And uh, what I didn't want to do was end up putting the car off the road in the second or third stage, come away from this rally with a non-finish. So, um, but we, we always wanted to have a push in the last one, and, and it worked well. David, you're no stranger to fighting at the top of this championship. You are a champion yourself of recent years. Second place 
is a great way to nail your colours to the mass for 2013. Yeah, it's a great start to the year. Uh, didn't expect it before this event, to be honest. Uh, would have been happy, you know, a top four finish, to be honest, in the uh, company of these World Rally cars. But to get second overall, we're ecstatic, really. Had a just, good day. Just to mention that as well, I mean, the guys in your class, that was close as well. It's been four people going into the last stage, all with a chance of winning, separated by 11 seconds. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic for the championship. Hopefully, it's like this all year. You know, that's what we need close competition and good battles. Hugh, you ended last season fighting for the championship. You start this season also fighting for the championship. Third place, tough event, good result. Yeah, yeah, it's a decent enough result. Obviously, better than this time last year when we were here. Um, you know, but. We came to win and we didn't win, and uh, we're a bit disappointed with that, obviously. Um, but credit to the guys, they, you know, they've gone well. I mean, Dave, Dave, Dave Wright always goes really, really well, and uh, Connor has come over from Ireland and, and driven fantastic today, so fully deserves the win. He's, he's driven fantastically, and, and Ewan, Ewan Thorburn um, deserves a mention as well for his performance today. He's uh, fantastic and really does add spice to the championship. Hopefully these guys will be at the Wilson and, and, and later rounds in the year because uh, adds a bit of spice and some really good competition to the championship, which is fantastic. Four people going into that final stage separated by 11 seconds is is a good result for the championship yeah, from the fans' point of view. Ab absolutely, it's great. It's great for us drivers as well. You know, we know we're on that. We have to be on our toes the whole time. We can't make any mistakes, um, and you get a lot more. I'm sure you get, a, you know, you get a lot more satisfaction from winning a rally when you've had to work really, really hard to do it. So, no, it's, it bodes well for the rest of the year, and uh, you know, let's hope it's a good championship. I know you're always happier to be a bit further up the podium, but we're always happy to see you on the podium. So, uh, well done. Thanks very much indeed. Cheers. Thank you. We ended 2012 in the REIS Get Connected BTRDA Rally Championship with a three-way fight to the title at the final round. We start 2013 with a four-way fight into the finish of the first round here at the Wydean. Conor McCluskey comes over from Ireland and takes the win. Hugh Hunter, David Wright and Ewan Thorburn all deserve a mention because the competition already looks fierce. We're looking forward to the rest of the championship. We hope you'll join us as it unfolds right here at Special Stage.